everyone, it's Ella Rose again here from the Earth's History is Confusing. I just want to share some things with you people that some people aren't probably aware of uh, about the Vatican and how evil and satanic it truly is. Okay, I've known this for years, but obviously a lot of people aren't, aren't aware of it. Okay, so here's the, the snake's head, there's his eyes, there's his fangs, okay. So the Pope sits here, and the people sit in the tongue in the mouth. So the people, you know, sitting there in the congregation are sitting on the tongue of the serpent in the mouth. Okay, now let's, I want to show you what this sculpture really is. Okay, most people just assume that, you know, this is just a sculpture Christ with, you know, the Pope, and they can't really make out what's here, All right? But I'm not really good at um, Photoshop or anything like that, so I'm going to show you an image that basically mirrors and moves these two halves together, which will form one. And you got the Swiss Guard on either side. Now the Swiss Guard used to be basically a military for hire; is they would go and you know, all the kings and the queens, if they had an issue, they'd go to the Swiss and hire out the Swiss guard and they would go and do all the dirty work. So they have always been there doing the dirty work. So you look at this sculpture, you can't really make anything of it. And the bloke that made it actually was killed by it as he was making it. So I'll show you. And this is basically what it forms when you mirror the two halves together. You can do a search yourself and mirror it for the image of, of what it is. Um, but basically it's, it's the hooved devil. The big horn. And I think that's supposed to be his wings. And then there's demons feeding on the bodies of the humans. And there's a snake, as you can see, the, the eyes of that snake. I just shared this one, nine, Revelations 9.11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in Greek tongue, he has his name Apollyon. Okay, so this is... And that's, uh, you know, he's supposed to be the vicar, but he recently dropped his title of vicar, and if you're following my videos, you'll get the gist of where I'm leading. So this is showing you what it's, you know, supposed to look like, you know, the head, but when it's mirrored, it's completely different. And this is a miniature statue of, of when it was made, and as you can see, it's it's completely demonic. I would not even walk in that hall. Okay, so I'll just do a quick read from Wikipedia. The Resurrection, or Lazarus Zone, is an 800 quintal, 80 metric ton bronze copper alloy sculpture by, I don't want to say the name, I don't want to offend, um, in this hall of Sikh's audience hall. Looks like a star fort, an old star fort, or a citadel as it's called in Rome, intended to capture the anguish of the 20th century mankind living under the threat of nuclear war. Uh, the resurrect zone depicts Jesus rising from a nuclear crater in the Garden of Gethsemane. So it was a garden at the foot of Mount Olives. So its dimensions are 66 by 23 by 10. Um, the commission of the work was ordered by Count Galilisi, you know, 1965, casting began at the Mussolini Art Foundry in Pistoia. It's a town in Italy region of Tuscany. In 1972, the final sketch was produced in 1975 and the work was completed and inaugurated on the 28th of September 1977. The original work was done in Pyrostone. And the fumes of the burning plastic gave Venezia a blood clot during his production. The statue was resort stored over three months in 2011. So, seeing that picture, I'll show it again. Okay, so, 
He sits right under that statue always, and then they're making out it's Jesus rising from a nuclear crater. These are supposed to be all dead humans, but when you see the reverse image, it's actually demons feasting on a human with Satan in the middle. Just a quick intro onto the Paul VI audience hall, also known as the Hall of Pontiffs Audiences, is building in Rome, named for Pope Paul the Six. <laughs> yeah, seating capacity of 6,300 design and reinforced concrete by the Italian architect Pierre Luguinovi. I'm sorry for saying the name wrong. Completed in 1971, it was constructed on land donated by the Knights of Columbus. It lies partially in Vatican City, but mostly in Italy. The Italian part of the building is treated as extraterritorial area, um, property of the Holy See, as regulated by the 1929 Latin Treaty signed with the Kingdom of Italy. Um, so it's used by the Holy See, it's used by the Pope as an alternative to St. Peter's Square, which I'll show you in a minute is actually a keyhole. Uh, well, a key, shaped in a key. When conducting his Wednesday morning general audience, it is dominated by 800 quintal, 80 ton bronze copper alloy sculpture by this, pen I mentioned him, Benzoni. A smaller meeting hall known as the Sinoid Hall is located in the building as well. The hall sits at the east end on the second floor. So it had a solar roof put in in May 2007. So it generates enough electricity. Well, it was donated, how kindly of them. So this is what it looks like from above. That's one of the eyes you can see. Okay, so let's check out the um, place I was just showing you. It's This is where the building is. And... This is where I was talking about the key. It looks like a key. So you got the the top of the key, the handle. And that's St. Peter's Square that goes down. See, it's all in the shape of a key. And of course, you've got the star fort, and it is also based on a, a star fort as well. So you've got all your the edges of your stuff there. If you've seen the other videos on my channel, I have an interest in star forts and know that a lot of these star forts have tunnels and they all link up and so that'd be the outer star fort with the ravelins and then this is the inner star fort with the towers. So, but this is where that hall is, the snake hall, and this is St. Peter's Square. Another beautiful star fort there. I didn't mark it on my maps because I know it's a star fort. But this is, and it goes down into here. With the old um, thing. So basically it's called a citadel. And it's mentioned in the box. So that's it there. And this is the key. And it's on a ley line. I made a video about ley lines the other day. I should perhaps make a video about the ley lines with this one. Okay, so it's very interesting that, you know, people don't know about this, but I've known about it for a few years, so I, I, I can't judge, but I'll share it with you what I know. And this is just the place where the Pope lives. Just thought I'd show you quickly. And it's within, you know, the dome. And the place that I just showed you is just there. It's sort of just on the outside, but they class it as part of the Holy See. Originally, it would have been part of the uh, star fort because it would have had a ravelin that would have come out like that. It matches on the other side. They match.
So there's these apartments there with all the statues. These statues were elsewhere and moved there. Clearly it's a star fort. Okay, so I'll just, you know, show you this page here. You know, the sculpture, resurrection, no th anything special. Okay, so the resurrection is a sculpture created by, I can't say his name, but I don't want to offend people. So between 1970 and unveiled by Pope, uh, unveiled by Pope Paul VI in 1977, dominates the stage of the Vatican Hall where the Pope's general audience is as hell. The resurrection is modelled on a red bronze and yellow brass and measures 66 feet by 23 feet by 10 feet. A large sculpture commissioned by Pope Paul VI in 1965 was realised in five years from 1970 to 75 by the sculpture Grotto Mare for the, I can't even say that, also known as Uluva I can't even say that, sorry, I apologise, in the Vatican. This guy was chosen after four years of selection in 1970 and 1975 and was made available to the Church of San Lorenzo in Pibiscus for the realisation of the work. The statue was inaugurated on the 28th of September 1977 in the presence of the reigning Pope Paul VI from the 3rd of October to 21st December 2011. The statue was subjected to a cleaning operation led by Professor Gulebse. Can't even say it, I'm, I apologise. The sculpture extends over a width of 20 metres and occupies the entire middle section and bottom wall of the classroom. At the centre is a red is the risen Christ, who, soaring, emerging from chaos infinite, depicting death. His long hair and beard are moved by the wind blowing from left to right. His arms are open. His face excludes inner pain. The rest of the sculpture is a collection of natural elements fused together with each other. And not well defined as rocks, as not well defined as rocks, twigs, and roots. On occasion, on Easter 2013, the Vatican Post Office have dedicated the sculpture, the sculpture stamp of 85 cents euro. Suddenly, there came to me the idea of Christ preaching peace for 2,000 years in the place where he prayed for the last time, the olive grove of Glasmere. Said Mr. Franzi in his book about the work. I had the idea of depicting Christ as if he were risen again from the explosion of this large olive grove. Peaceful sight for his last prayer. Christ rises from the crater torn open by a nuclear bomb, an atrocious explosion, a vortex of violence and energy. So we got the snake hall, the eyes, it's the roof of the mouth, and of course the people sit on the tongue. Showing this. So when you merge the two, this is what you get. You see it? And if you search on YouTube, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to get strikes. Um, it, you, you can see here, there's demons. They're all demons and they're feasting on the humans. You can't make it out. Um, you can't make it out in... Um, on its own, but yeah, yeah. The video plays nothing really; it just shows you when it was in introduced, and yeah. So anyway, this bloke splits it. And you can do this yourself if you're good at editing and mirror imaging stuff. So he splits it, and then you you bring the two together. So interview with the two mirror imaging halves. Notice anything special? I mean, I can see it, but I don't know if you can. Empirical Fanazi is amongst the largest and most celebrated exponents of the international sculpture. His works are held in major private collections and major museums around the world, including the is it Hokan Open Air Museum in Japan, the Tate Gallery in London, the National Gallery of Modern Art in Rome, the Art Institute in Chicago, and Momat of, of Tokyo, and the Museum of Contemporary Art in Montreal. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. Here you can see the demons 
feeding on the humans. It's not just sticks and twigs and Jesus coming up from a nuclear hole. It's demons and that's the, the Baphomet with his healed horn hoof. See the horn? That's his head. It's another head of a demon. It's very, very satanic. Very evil. You see, that's the bit that I'm mentioning the horn. That's it there. You see the demons there. So I have one more I will share with you. Now, everyone knows of the Last Supper image, and you know, normally there's a, a black border that goes around the top here, a black and sort of white border that goes around the top. And, you know, a lot of people probably have them in their homes, and once I found this out about probably, probably 10, 12 years ago, I got rid of anything to do with this, any idols, like that. I hardly ever wear jewellery. Cam, okay, I wore jewellery the other night when I did a video. But I hardly ever wear jewellery. And this image isn't what you think it is. And no, it's not got, it hasn't got, you know, whatever, Mary or whatever leaning in or whatever it's supposed to be. I'll show you what it is. Okay. This is where it sort of starts. He starts to morph to show it. And there you go. There it is. Your mirror image, the two of these. That's on this one, sorry. You mirror these two together. And then you get this. You keep going once it's mirrored properly. And then the black border along the top. You get this. It's goat's heads. That's the top border, you know, the black and white top border. I can clearly see the goat head myself just by looking at it. So, if you didn't know about that, I just thought I'd like to add that one in. I'm sorry if I've scared any any of you, but there it is there. So, and yeah, there was always a black image uh, border along the top. And so you can see the goat image in here. Okay, so I can perhaps play a little bit of this, and I'll leave the link so you guys can get it, but I'm not playing all of it. I'm allowed to play 10%. This is Yahoo 7, and I want to share with you guys in an amazing find that was found within Leonardo da Vinci's painting of The Last Supper. Now, this will focus not on G... takes form down here and everybody else is mirrored from the original. This is the original. But what happens when you invert it right down the middle, see this line underneath Jesus' eye? When you invert it right where you're supposed to, right down the middle, and you do the whole thing, not like they did, you do it the correct way, you get yeah, this. There it is. Okay. It is absolutely jaw-dropping image of a transformation of Jesus Christ in this image. So, there are a lot of startling things that happen. I don't know what, I don't want to scare people. He takes the third eye on the forehead. And this is real deal, folks. This reminds me of the Jesus with the eye on his head out of I Pet Go 2. Okay, so, yeah, I don't want to scare people or upset people, but this has to be shared. I don't know whether it's Da Vinci mocking or Da Vinci telling the truth or I don't know, but go to the site yourself, check it out. Um, it's pretty freaky. Um, 
And like you said, if you're going to mirror it, you, you've got to mirror it from halfway down the middle. And you can also do it along, there's generally a, um, like this one doesn't have it, but there's generally a black and white border around it. So, um, I'll leave links in the description and, um, I know a lot of people are going to get upset by this, but, um, yeah, this is why Jesus said, have no graven images and, you know, beware of those that come in his name. Um, yeah, so if you're with me, still I'd like to thank you. Uh, I appreciate all your comments and, um, any, any, anything you want to share, just drop the line in and I'll get back to you. And Charles, I, I don't care if you're going to go at me, have a go at me. I'm just going to block you. I don't care. I've got more people blocked than I have subscribers and I generally like to keep the channel down low for that reason. I don't need the negativity in my life. So anyway, good evening, good afternoon or good morning. Wherever you are in the world, raise your vibrations. You are loved. Wherever you are in the world, just remember that you are loved. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.